Hi, George here. And today we're going to be removing this sky and replacing this with a better sky. And we're doing that with the background eraser tool and a few more tricks for a good job. And we'll end up with something kind of like that. Okay, see how this is done. I'm just going to start by getting rid of all of these layers that we don't need over here. There we go. Get rid of that. And it leaves us with the basic sky. Now, the problems we have in here for us first are the sky. I want to have clouds back in our better sky. Second one are going to be those windows in here. They match this sky color. We'll need to adjust the window color. And finally, hiding right down here behind this rock, a couple of trash cans. We'll take care of those as well. Get those out of there. Okay, first thing is just to remove this sky. Now, normally I would do this with layer masks, things like that. We'll do this with the background eraser tool, which is another way of going to this. Now, whenever I do anything which is actually going to be damaging or changing the pixels on an image, I always make a backup copy of my background image. So let's right click over here, duplicate layer, choose OK, hide the original, and that's our safety in case things get messed up in here. Okay, now let's zoom in over on the left hand side. That's probably far enough. Maybe one more. There we go. So we're zoomed in. Let's now go to the background eraser tool. It's down here with the tools right here. Here's the eraser tool. And the one you want is this one right here, the little with the scissors on it. That's the background eraser tool. And you can go pretty large size on this. When you're doing this, you put that plus sign over the background and then overlap onto whatever it is that you want to get rid of. Contiguous means that it's only going to be erasing things that are actually touching. Discontiguous means we'll erase into areas that are not touching, like we have right up in that area right there. So I'm going to use this as discontiguous. The tolerance is how much latitude it has on the coloration that you're choosing. The higher the number here, the more latitude, more range. And the problem here is that right along this edge is going to be a very soft gradient that comes in and there's a little bit of the sky mixed in with a little bit of this roof cutter. We'll have to do a fix on that, but we can minimize that by bringing up our tolerance a bit. I'm going to set this at 30, which is pretty high. And hopefully that will minimize that effect. You see it over here as well, where the blue sky is blending into the color of the house right there. Okay, we're all set. And simply brush in here. And it's going to make an eraser like that and just erase whatever it is that you're overlapping. And then stop at the edge where the things change. And as I go up here, notice how it's kind of bluish along there. We'll fix that in a later step. I'll just hold the space bar down. Let's move this. And here's where the discontiguous helps right there. I went too far and hit that drain pipe. Let's just undo. And I'll make sure I don't go over the drain pipe. Let's be careful on that corner right there. It might not fit. I think I can, no, nope, can't quite catch that. So we'll fix that little bit later on. Now, when you're using this tool, as you're brushing along, it's thinking about the whole thing. It's analyzing it, making its adjustments. So this is good as long as you're doing an edge like this. It's not a good idea to use this tool for big areas because you're just making the computer work a lot more than it has to since that's just a straight eraser job. So we're going to go along and take care of this part at first. And then we'll come back and we'll do the rest of that sky with just the regular eraser. So we'll go along. So this is just for the edge. And we'll take care of the edge in here. Now it's a bit tricky right here. This thing may or may not come out okay it's because it's a very close color to the background color you have a pretty wide latitude as you can see there it actually cuts into that so we'll have to fix that as well in a later step again hold the space bar down to move the image and just go around and clean up that edge and take out the background right along the edge of your foreground object and come around to this side. And did okay in there. That worked out pretty well. And right down here. And there's the finish up at that point. Okay, that's all done. Now we need to remove all this stuff. And again, I would just go over here to the regular tool. The regular eraser tool. Let's bring our size up. Pretty good size right here. I have it at a hard edge. That's fine. And then just come in and carefully erase out all the rest of this sky in here. And you'll find if you use the regular tool for this, this will be a lot faster than trying to use the background eraser. So make sure you go ahead and make that switch between the two erasers just to get rid of this background stuff. You could also use the magic wand up here to lose all this and then just clean the edges up. But since I'm using erasers, I'll just stick with the eraser. That works out pretty well. And then just go back and forth like this. 
until you clean out that whole sky area. It's not a very slow process. You could even use a larger brush if you want to. It goes pretty fast, as you can see in here. So we'll just work our way around and finish off getting rid of all this sky. Now the reasons why you might want to use this instead of just using a layer mask, possibly you don't like layer masks, that's fine, I happen to like them. Or you may be wanting to do something in here which requires actual transparency in this area and not a layer mask. Some effects are done better if you don't have a layer mask hiding in there to cause an additional effort on the computer to figure things out. Some things won't work with the layer mask. So there are times that you may actually need to do it this way, but it's really a choice up to you. You know, as long as the finished product is what you want, as long as the finished look is how you want it, that's the most important thing. The technique you use is really your own choice. Whatever it is that you are most comfortable with, if you like using erasers, then this is a great method. Just make sure that you have that backup layer just in case you can see right now why. Because I'm losing all this sky. If I had to come back for anything, I wouldn't have it available if I didn't save that backup layer. And one example of that, if I scroll down over here, is this thing here. We're gonna copy this from the background layer. So it was a good idea to save that. All right, let's get over here and let's finish off removing the sky. Almost through with this step. As you can see, it goes pretty fast, actually. Just going back and forth and just swiping it out like that. And here's the finish on this side using a pretty large size brush, so it's going very quickly. There we go. And our next step is going to be going along and cleaning up any little areas where things are missing or not quite correct, like this little bit of blue in there. Let's zoom in on that. And for this, I'm just going to grab the polygonal lasso tool. Let's just make a quick lasso right around that's so we have that inside of a selection. Back to the eraser tool and just tap that. And that's gone. And then Control D to deselect. That's fixed. And our other problem, of course, was that vent, that roof vent over here. And I'm holding down the space bar there to do that move. And it's this thing right in here that went kind of transparent on us. So for this, let's hide that. I'll show the background layer. Back to our polygonal lasso tool. You know, do a careful selection around this roof vent like this. Now, when you use the polygonal lasso tool, don't click too quickly. It could collapse your selection that you're making. So take your time. Just do a tap and then a breath and then a tap and then a breath. So you just kind of zen out as you're using this tool and it will work out well for you. And work our way around to this side. And straight down here, a little bit of roof right there back to the beginning. That's now selected. Let's now go up here to Layer, come down to New, and Layer via Copy. And here's a new layer with that little piece copied on it. I'm just going to rename this, double click. I'll call this one Vent. I'll put that above this layer. And now I'll hide our background layer. And there we go. That's now included in that image. So that's all fine. Okay, the next thing we need to do, let's just go back here to Fit Screen. And that's going to be taking care of this blue rim that we got in here. It's just a little bit of blue. It's not too much. It's going to show more as soon as I put in that background image. You can really see it over here, that blue coloration right there. And right up here, this is really going to show up when we change the color of the sky because the blue is going to be a different kind of blue. So what I like to do here is just to convert this over to black and white. And that's easy to do. Over here to the sponge tool, normally that looks like that. So click over here, Dodge Tool, then change to a Sponge Tool. And my brush size here is 10 pixels, which is fine. And I have this set for Desaturate. Let's make sure we're on the right layer, and then brush over that edge. Now the Desaturate is going to make it into a grayscale as opposed to a color. It just removes that bluishness from it. There we go, a little bit of blue right in here. I'm going to take that out while I'm at it. And if it's a grayscale, it'll look just fine against the new background. So we'll just go along and take that out. It doesn't change the values at all. It doesn't change what's in the image. It just removes that kind of a cyan tint. So it'll match the new background much better. And I'll just go clear around this whole thing here and hit all the edges. Notice I'm doing a couple of strokes here. It's set for a flow of 100%, but you still have to go over it a couple of times 
to really get this to change properly. And just work your way along the edge of the roof. You know, take out that cyan coloration. Now right up in here, I'm gonna be a little bit careful. I don't wanna get into that white very much. I wanna stay out of that as much as possible. And then right down this edge, there we go. And just continue on around till we have this thing finished. Now right over here, again, this is on the other layer. So I'll take care of that as well. Just go to the vent layer here. Same thing on this one. Let's just take out all of that blue and turn this into a black and white image, which will look just fine in our photograph. There we go. Okay, back to our house layer. And we'll finish this up. Clear down over here. There we go. And work up this side. And we're almost finished with this step. We can then come in and bring in our new background sky. And that should drop in very well for us at that point. Okay, there it is. Last little side over here. And let's do that whole drain pipe. And a bit of this edge over here. It's a little bit transparent, right? And a little soft on that edge. And that's because there's a lot of blue in there. If I got for a lower tolerance number, I wouldn't have had as much of that transparent. But I think we're going to be just fine on that. It should look correct once the new sky is in place here. Okay, that's done. Control zero back to fit screen. And that's fine. Now we're ready to bring in our new sky up in here. So you bring in that photograph. And I have that one right here. It's just a nice kind of pleasant sky with some puffy clouds in it. And if we look at this thing, notice how there is a horizon effect on this. The clouds get a lot thinner down here and the sky gets whiter down here and it gets more and more blue up here and the clouds get puffier up here. I want to use this part right down here so that the perspective in the image looks correct. If I just use this, it would look kind of odd. So I want to be using the bottom part of the image. I have a floating window on this one. If you don't have that, go up here to edit, come down to preferences and general and check that checkbox right here. It says allow floating documents in expert mode. Put a check mark there. You can then Float your windows. It's real easy then to simply grab your background, drag it over here, and transfer your picture just like that. Okay, now it's one layer above, so I'll pull this underneath the house layer. And it's now in behind. You can see it's kind of kind of weird looking with that cloud. I don't really like that too much. I like it a lot better being down here. I think this is a better look. Too far up, of course. Now I want to have this more of that other sky. So what I'm going to do is I'll pull this down like this. Let's hide that house layer. I'm on the sky layer. I'm just going to grab the control handle down here, bottom middle. I'm going to put that up and just squish this up about halfway. There we go. Bring our house back in. And I think that looks a lot nicer. We have that kind of gradient happening in here. So gives us that effect of a horizon down there. And we have some more nice clouds on top. And that looks really nice. Okay, the edges look really good. As you can see in here, it looks perfect. No kind of weird blueness happening on that. That's great. So the sky is in there. Now the next thing we need to do is to fix these windows. They're too blue. They don't match that background sky. Now a couple of things we can do. First off, we can brighten the sky up a little bit, which is not a bad idea. So we'll do that with a couple of adjustment layers. Go up here to layer. Make sure you're on the sky layer, and we are. Come down to adjustment layer. We'll first do levels and use previous layer right here. Choose OK. And I'll just bring the white up a bit. This will brighten the sky up. There we go. Bring the mid-tone control to the right to add a bit more saturation on that. It's all in the mid-tone range, so that's better. I think it looks pretty good right here. And we'll also increase the saturation just a little bit on this. So layer, come down to new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK. And then we'll bump up the saturation just a bit. Not too much, just a little bit, make it a bit more blue, a bit more inviting and I think that looks really nice. So the sky looks good. I like that coloration, but it still is different than our coloration down here. This is a different kind of blue. This is more cyan. This is more of a royal blue up here, a variation on that. So we need to change or fix these windows. So for that, let's go up here again to our house layer and then go up to enhance, come down to adjust color and go here to replace color right there. 
and then using the eyedropper tool, just click into the middle of one of those windows and you should see those go white in our picture here. And they did, that's fine. We can now come down here and adjust this. Now they're too bright, too much saturation. I can back off on the saturation a little bit and we can adjust the hue a touch, maybe a bit more to the right hand side. Bring our lightness up a little bit in here. I'm just kind of playing with the saturation and playing with the lightness and the hue, trying to get up to look like this color right in here, this kind of range. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's just double check on that. Here is, is without, and here it is with, and that really did improve that. Choose okay. We've now matched the windows. Okay, last thing to do is those trash cans in the back. And again, that's still in that one layer. So I'll zoom in on that. There we go. And we'll do some clone stamp work right in here. So I'll first grab my polygonal lasso tool and let's do a lasso right around the edge of this rock. Since I want to have this selected out so it doesn't get changed. And again, when you're using this tool, don't click too fast or it will collapse your selection. Just take your time. And we'll come around to this side. This will be our protection for the rock and come around down over to here and I'll go clear down to the bottom of where that driveway changes right in here. And let's go out a ways and up and around like that. And then back down here and then back in to find our original spot, which is right there. There we go. We now have a selection in here. We can do our clone stamping in this and it's not going to be touching that rock in front. So clone stamp tool. There's our size. It's a bit large. I'm going to bring that size down a little bit. About half the size. That's good. We'll do the left hand side first. I'll grab some of this brick up here, alt and click, and then come down and just paint that in. That a couple of times. And let's take this bush right here. Alt and click and I'm going to bring a bit of that bush in and then some of this wall over here. And we'll take that wall clear over behind the rock. Some of this wall down here, bring that in. And a little more right down in there of that wall. And I think that is good. Same thing right hand side. I'll take some of this wall right up here. Bring it down. Now we have some gradients happening in here. There's a gradient shift here. There's a gradient shift left and right. We'll need to adjust for that. But that's one real quick little final touch. Bring that down. Let's bring in some of this bush over here. Going to the left side. There we go. And bring in some of this rock wall right in here. That's now gone. And I think we're okay in here. But just in case, what I'm going to be doing is increasing the size of my brush. So it's a pretty good size like that. I'll tap in here. It's a soft edge brush. So Alt and click. And I'll just tap right there. A couple of taps. And that's just a more subtle variation in there and that will help to hide that edge. Okay. Control D to deselect and then Control zero back to fit to screen. And there we go. We've now used the background eraser tool to help us replace that sky with a much more interesting looking sky. Let's see how this looks, see how it compares. I'll take this background layer here. I'm just going to make a duplicate of this. Drag it up on top. There's the original. And here's our new adjusted version. Original and the new version. I think this is a much better looking photograph. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Click on share. Make sure you don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, Take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements and the link for that is right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.